Hello and welcome! Grafana Champion is here. My name is Adaria Volkova and this channel helps you utilize Grafana to its full potential. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use all major features of the Variable Panel version 231. Are you ready? Let's go! I published the first Variable Panel tutorial video about 5 months ago. Since then, we introduced many new features. Here on our website, in the blog section, if you click on the Variable Panel tag, you will see all posts related to the Variable Panel. Click on any for details. Usually, following a release blog post, we publish a short, brief, one-minute video version with the most exciting features in that release. Watch or read or both. In today's video, I explain all the major features of the variable panel and demonstrate how to set them up. Let's start with what is the variable panel. In Grafana, here in the dashboard setting, you can create a dashboard variable. Those are the only settings that are configurable. The visual representation control is here, where you can specify whether to display your variables on the dashboard or not. If displayed, Grafana always shows it here at the top left corner. The variable panel is built on top of the existing dashboard variable feature, allowing more flexibility with visual and functional features. Let's look at some examples. In this scenario, I have a bakery chain operating in London, Istanbul and Stockholm. To follow performance closely on my dashboard, I need to visualize daily sales. Step 1 is to create a regular dashboard variable. Here, for Show on the dashboard, I select nothing, since I will use the variable panel instead. I select the query type, name city, retrieve cities from the connected time scale with this query, select distinct city from the bakery table. Below, I allow multi-value and include all options. Here, Grafana is already showing me the retrieved values. My variable has three options which are my cities, London, Istanbul and Stockholm. All good, say dashboard. On the dashboard, I go into a new visualization, select the variable panel from the drop-down, specify the title, select city. The course setting for the variable panel is here in the layout section. Here I specify which dashboard variable to display on the variable panel. I only created one dashboard variable thus far, so here I select city. Header, hide. In the variable section display mode, you can select out of three options. The table is to show all options with check marks or radio buttons. It depends on the multi value parameter from, from the setting. The minimize mode gives a minimalistic look, and the button transforms every option into a button. I cover more of each mode as I go with this video. For now, I select minimize. These two options, the variable name and display mode, are the bare minimum to make your variable panel work. They are enough for basic configuration. Note that a data source is not required and can be anything. Here is what I have on my dashboard so far. A panel that displays the dashboard variable in a drop-down. Back to my bakery scenario. I have a bakery in the multiple locations in every city. To reflect the location, I create another dashboard variable. Type. Query, name, location, name, data source, time scale, and the query is to select all location names from the chosen city. Allow multiple value and include all options. Save dashboard. Now I can set up a visualization with sales. Add a new visualization. I believe the bar chart will work the best. In the title, I enter sales and my dashboard variable city here. Then for the data source, I select time scale, switch to code. In the query, I group sales by date. In where clause, I specify my dashboard variables, city and location name. Run the query. All right, I will fast forward the bar chart cosmetics for color and sizes. Also, I add a transformation to display the date time value in a date format. Then hit Apply and let's take a look at the dashboard. Those sales are in Stockholm. I can add another city. Note that the bar chart title changes accordingly. Here I select all three cities – Stockholm, London and Istanbul. 
As I mentioned, my cities have multiple bakery locations. To be more granular with sales visualization, I add another variable panel. In the layout section, select a location name variable. This time, set the display mode to table, panel title, location, and header hide. Hit apply. On the dashboard, I rearrange the bit. When I change the city below, the locations are filtered accordingly. If I select multiple cities, then the locations from the multiple cities are here. Let's see if the variable panel looks better on the right side of the dashboard. Looks great, but I will keep them on the left. Let's move on to configuring something more interesting. For the Lambeth and Buttersea, my sales on December 17th are zero. This sounds like a big problem. I need to indicate that zero sales to bring the user attention to the issues my business is experiencing. One of the ways I can achieve that is here. For the city variable panel, I change the display mode to button. Then I connect the variable panel to the time scale data source and in the query, group sales by city. Run query. Notice the color of all buttons changed. This means I'm on the right path to the desired configuration. Switch to the table view. Here my query returns three rows, one per city where London has zero sales. This data frame contains supplemental information about the cities. Next, I connect the data frame with my variable panel values. It is done here in the status section. I need two fields, one field to join two data sets and another to provide a numeric value, which in my case is sales. The values from the sales field will be used here in the thresholds. I set up the colors as follows. For the values from 0 to 0, 05, red color. From 0, 05 and above, green color. Now switch back to the variable panel. The color of my buttons indicate if the sales in that city have ever been zero in the selected time range. The sales in the London area have been zero once. When London is selected, the button is highlighted in red. If I unselect London, the button is red only in the outline. Istanbul and Stockholm have a green color, either outlining or filling. That was an example of using the Grafana threshold setting in the variable panel to color code selectable options. Moving to the tree view features. When multiple cities are selected, it's unclear which city every location corresponds to. To fix that, I'm going to configure a tree view layout. A structure for a tree view layout comes in the data frame. I go to edit mode. In my example, I connect it to time scale. Let's name the query a location city mapping and enter SQL select location name city from the bakery table. Run query. Here is what my tree view structure looks like. Two columns, one with locations and another with cities. Now here on the left in the variable panel configuration layout section, I can add a group with the name city. The first level the city is taken from my mapping. I can see the query name as a prefix here. And the other level location name is taken from there as well. Note that these names must match the variable names with which I'm connecting them. Switch the table view. Here you go. I have a tree view look where I can collapse and expand any city and see all locations. To add a color coded status, I add another query. Let's name it status color. And here I grouped sales by a location name. In the status section, I specify the location name and sales. Next, add thresholds. I want any value from 0 to 0, 05 displayed in red and all about 0, 05 in green. Here you go. On the dashboard, I have the butter seat and lambeth with the red circles, two locations with zero sales. Let's say some of my bakeries sell croissants. Some sell pretzels and some sell both. For the business purpose, I need to see how sales go depending on what my bakeries sell. To work on that, I start with a new dashboard variable. For this one, I choose a custom type and specify the name type. The bakery type is stored in my database as a character. Here in the custom options, I can specify the mapping. C for croissants, P for pretzels and CP for both. 
If I click Run Query, I get understandable English words, but underneath this dashboard variable is going to contain the code values CP or CP. The variable panel supports such format. Allow multi-value and include all options. Let's see how it looks on the dashboard. Before that, however, I need to modify my SQL. In the sales bar chart visualization here, I add the condition to filter by a selected type of a dashboard variable. Run the query. I forgot to hide the dashboard variable, so it's still here on top. Only the croissant sales are displayed now. Save and apply. Next, I go to the edit mode of this variable panel. Add a new query. Name, location, type, mapping. SQL to select distinct type from the bakery table. In the layout section, I add a new group type. New level type field reference the SQL I just added. Our little typo here. Let me fix it. After the change, my variable panel has two tabs. The type tab displays English words, croissant, pretzels, etc. But here in the query, the codes CP and CP will be used to work with the database. It is a convenient feature allowing you to display user-friendly words while using codes in the database. All right, let's move on and quickly go over some cosmetic features. Favorites. In the header section, if display is enabled, I can enable select favorites. With that, every option in my variable panel is going to have an icon star. I can favorite a few, let's say Nazca and Normal. Then I can filter to keep only favorites by clicking this star on top. Sorting. Enabling the sort by value will display this icon. This sort is by the field specified in the section status here, which is in my case sales. Visible search. If I enable a values filtering, the option always visible search appears. If enabled, will show the search text field at all times. You can type the text to filter the displayed content. If the option is disabled, the user will have to click on the funnel icon to get access to the search text field. I saved the best for the end of this video, redirect function. Here, when I select Lambeth, the sales analytics includes pretzel sales. When I choose Brixton, analytics includes croissant sales. For Chelsea, the dashboard includes sales of croissants and pretzels. From the user's point of view, the sales analytics adds another graph, but behind the scenes, Grafana opens another dashboard. To achieve that, step one. I start with creating all dashboards that I ever need to switch to. Step 2. In my database, I create a mapping between a bakery location and dashboard unique ID. Step 3. I create a new dashboard variable to select dashboard unique ID for the selected location name. Step 4. I ensure that each of my dashboard has an identical variable panel. Let me open one variable panel in edit mode. For the queries, I have a location to city mapping. For the panel configuration on the right, there is no title, table as a displayed mode, header, display. The layout, one group, meaning one tab, with levels city and location. Step 5. Here in the dashboard section, I specify the dashboard unique ID variable. After those five steps, the switching between dashboards should work. I hope you followed along and got the same results as I did. Now you know how to use the redirect feature with the variable panel. That sums up the overview of the variable panel version 231. Please review our documentation and blog posts for more examples and quick tips. Based on our YouTube statistics, we see that many people watch us constantly but do not subscribe. Consider subscribing. It's the easiest way to express gratitude for our work and keep this channel going. That is all for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.